So tomorrow you have a test. The test is going to cover all of chapter P. So the, all of the chap the prerequisite chapter. So again, this chapter was really just a review of your Algebra 1 skills. When we start Chapter 1, we're actually going to start getting into the Algebra 2 content. So because this is going to cover all of the Chapter P, um, we may end up doing something with that first test grade, whether we average the two grades, um, just for the people who have gotten their acts together and have learned that, you know, maybe you didn't study as much that, as you should have, um, just to help you guys out. We're also going to be adding in a fourth quiz. We're gonna have a quiz a week from today um, with the hopes of maybe possibly dropping a lowest quiz grade or replacing the first one. Um, so all of this may be taking place. We're gonna see how it goes. So my advice to you is study. Study like you've never studied before, um, especially if you did poorly on that first test. So all of chapter P, so it's got the exponents, it's got the radicals, it's got all of that on there. Um, so my advice to you is things that you can use to study or go back, use the quiz reviews, use that first test review because all that content is gonna be on this test as well. There are 15 questions on the test. Um, more than likely, you'll probably get like 50 minutes, um, you know, probably the entire class period. So it's, it'll be important that you come in, get right ready to work, um, so you don't have to worry about running out of time. So 15 questions tomorrow. Honestly, if you know your factoring and you know your radicals, um, the test should be easy because even with the multiplying and the dividing, it's factoring and then canceling. So you need to be able to factor and factor really rapidly. Um, that will definitely help you on this test as well as breaking down the square roots. Also remember when you have a negative exponent, it turns it into a fraction. If it's a fraction exponent, then you're gonna find the radical, um, whatever the index is, find that root and then apply the exponent. So just different things like that. It looks like this review has all of it on there, but again, go back. Don't just focus just on this review um, because again, we don't always give reviews that look identical to the test. So it's your job to go back, look at your notes, look at your homeworks, go back and look at everything, not just focus on this one document. All right, does anybody need to see anything explained from this review, Bradley? 84. Let me zoom in here. Okay, so again, just to recap, tomorrow's test has 15 questions. It will cover all of chapter P. You should use your old quizzes, your old test use those to review. You can also use your notes, your homework, and then all reviews for the previous tests and quizzes, as well as this review that is in here as well. I also just posted an assignment on Canvas. It's titled Chapter P, interactive review and that has four different links to quiz quizzes and one gim kit so there's three quizzes and then one gim kit and again these are optional um, but if you like to use these interactive tools to help you study, um, you have access to those. So all of this would be a good way to help you practice. You have all the solution files for all of these assignments. So use those to study. Um, be able to factor, be able to factor quickly. Um, a good portion of the test 
is factoring because when you're multiplying and dividing, you need to factor first, cancel. When you're adding and subtracting, you need to factor the denominator. Same thing on the complex fractions. You're going to need to simplify it. So um, factoring is going to be a major component as well as the radicals. Be able to work with square roots or cube roots. Um, be able to work with exponents as well. And again, all of chapter P on the test tomorrow. I will have office hours tomorrow morning um, if you have any questions, as well as Ms. Ferrier will also have office hours in the morning. So if you see there's too many geometry people in here and you want to go down to Ms. Ferrier, you can also go to her classroom as well. She's room 114. Okay, so you will have complex fractions. So again, what I like to do here is I like to treat this as two separate problems. So I'm gonna actually simplify the numerator and then I'm gonna simplify the denominator. Once I get those two simplified fractions, um, because I'm subtracting and adding them, and then I'm gonna divide. So let's work with the top one. It's one over, 1 over x and I can't stress enough that you need to be able to write neatly so you can read your own writing because soon as you make a little mistake because you can't read your writing and you can't see a subtraction sign or something it's going to mess everything up all right so what I'm going to do is I need to find a common denominator now again remember Finding an LCD is not just saying, oh, I can just add one here and add one here. It doesn't work that way. It's always finding the LCD through multiplication. So my LCD here is actually both. It's X times X plus one. So I'm gonna write that for the bottom of both. This first fraction is missing the X plus one. So whatever you're gonna multiply to get to the bottom, you also have to multiply to the top. And then now the, the second fraction is just missing the x. So this is like a minus x. So now I have x plus 1 minus x over x times x plus 1. Now, common mistake at this point is people think, oh, I can cancel stuff. You have to add this numerator. So once I combine my like terms here, these are gone. So now the numerator is just 1 over x times x plus 1. Now I need to add the denominator. So now I have in the denominator, I have 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1. Same common denominator, x times x plus 1. And now this one's missing the x plus 1. This one's missing the x. So this new numerator is x plus 1, and this one's an x. Notice this time it's an addition sign, so when I go to combine the like terms here, 1x plus 1x is 2x over x times x plus 1. Now, here's the two things that I'm going to be actually dividing, because this was my simplified numerator, and this was my simplified denominator. So now let's do the keep flip change. So keep the blue one, change the multiplication, flip upside down. So this cancels an x with an x, an x plus one with an x plus one. And remember, what's being left behind are ones. So then one times one is one, and then one times 2x plus 1, and you're done. So again, nice and methodical. Write it down. Don't try to skip steps. Trust me, it'll end up being a really rough year. Any other ones explained from this? No? All right. I think I have some interactive things that maybe we can try. Let me see what I can. And I'll maybe post some of these. Let's see if we can play some of these. Um, 
me see what I got. 